We're now on chapter two of the um, Rudimenta Grammaticae Comenii, the uh, rudiments of grammar of Comenius. Uh, Caput alterum, chapter two, de nomine, about the noun. Vocabula, capitis secundi. The words of the second chapter, dicuntur nomina, are called nouns, nomina. Names, literally. Est autem nomen, vel masculini generis, ut hic rex. There is um, a noun, a name, that is either of masculine gender, and the Latin is of masculine of gender, that's how the Latin forms itself, masculini generis, ut hic rex, this king close by, this king close by, well, feminini generis, or of feminine gender, ut haec regina, like this queen, that's close by. Well, neutri generis, or of neuter gender, that's neither masculine nor feminine, neuter gender, ut hoc regnum, this kingdom that's close to us. Cum nomen, when a noun, per diversas terminationes flectitur, when it is bent through its various endings, now he'll explain what this means, particular use of the word bent um, in the way the Romans understood it. Ut, such as dominus, domine, domini, domino. So the endings of the word are changing. The little fingers on the end. Here's the, here's the word itself and these are the endings of the words and the endings are sort of bending. They're changing. If you think of it this way, they are inflecting, right? Dominus, domine, domini, domino, right? The ends of the word bend in Latin. The words are flexible. Quot autem sint casus? How many, therefore, or how many then, there may be of cases? Apparet, appears. Ex interrogatione et responsione, from asking questions and getting answers. Now this book is written for six-year-olds, and so he doesn't go into great detail with the grammar, but there's sufficient grammar here. Um, in fact, there's more grammar in this Rudimenta Grammaticae than in the beginning part of the Cambridge Latin course, even though it's only eight pages long. So here we go. Quis ibi stat? Who is standing over there? Dominus, the master. Right? Nothing's happening to him. He's just standing. And so this is the, the thing itself. Quis ibi stat? Who's standing there? Dominus. Waka ilum, call him. O domine. Notice the ending, domine, and quies est vox, whose is the voice, domini, changing, and cui servis, to whom do you give service, domino, I give service to the master, domino, and quem vides, whom do you see, and that's dominum, notice the ending, dominum, and cum quo ibis, with whom will you go, Cum domino, with the master. And so we can see these endings, us, e, i, o, um, and o, for this particular type of word. And uh, singulariter, singular, cum de uno loquimur, when we're speaking about one. So, of course, all of these words are singular because there's only one master. Plu, pluraliter, the plural, pluraliter, autem, Cum de pluribus loquimur, when we are speaking about many, seek in this way. Qui sunt isti, who are these? Who are these? And the answer is domini, they are lords or they are masters. Um, Waka eos, call them, o domini, o lords or o masters. Quorum vox, whose voice? And the answer is vox dominorum, the voice of the masters or the masters they possibly after the s voice so um let's go back to the singular quickly quies est vox whose is the voice vox domini the master's voice so this is the apostrophe s the master's voice um let's go back to the plural quibus servis to whom do you give service and the answer is dominis to the lords or to the masters um, quos vides, whom do you see? And the answer in Latin, dominos, I see masters. So when you are seeing something is happening, right, 
uh, the sight is coming out and hitting the person and the word changes it bends right if you imagine you know, right the sight well light doesn't come out of your eyes but in ancient times some people thought that it's coming out your eye hitting the master and the ending of the master bends um coming um, in this case dominos um cum quibus ibis with whom will you go cum dominis with the lords or with the masters sunt ergo latinis there are therefore to the latins and the latins are of course the romans sunt ergo latinis in qualibet numero in which uh, ever number so singular or plural there only are two to choose from casus sex six of these things called cases where the ends of the word bend qui ap pelantur which are called one nominativus the nominative that's the thing itself so when you say quis ibi stat who's standing there dominus the master so that's nominative vocativus when we call him voca ilum call him and the answer is o domine right so that is the vocative genitivus is the case of the apostrophe s also called possessivus the possessive case so it's either apostrophe s or in case of masters it's um s apostrophe um possession so uh quius est works whose is the voice that's uh, master's voice master apostrophe s voice and dativus the case of giving um or direction towards so qui servis to whom do you give service and the answer is domino i give service to the master so that's something you're doing towards him and the accusativus also called the activus in some ancient grammars um the accusativus quem vides whom do you see so the act of seeing is going out and it's hitting the master and the end's changing dominum uh, dominum video i see the master or in the plural dominos video i see the masters and ablativus or it's also called the instrumentivus the case of action when something is happening you do something with something in case of the instrument so you kill someone with the sword you would use this case for that um so cum quibus ibis with whom will you go in the plural cum dominis with the lords or cum quo ibis with whom will you go in the singular cum domino with the lord nominativus et vocativus dicuntur casus recti the nominative and the vocative are called the straight cases the straight cases and the other ones are called obliqui the oblique cases and the reason for this is that in most of the types of words we will encounter in latin the nominative and the vocative don't change they do change in the case where the word ends in the nominative in the letter us like dominus becomes domine in the second so second type of word domine we point at him and it changes to domine um but mostly um words are the same in the nominative and in the evocative but the grammarians have still told us and so we still say that the nominative and the vocative are the straight cases and other ones are the oblique cases the cases that inflect um nusquam enim differunt ili do nisi in declinatione secunda because these two don't change except in the second type of word what's called the second declension as i've just said to you et quidem tantum in is uh, nominibus quae nominativo in us desinunt and only in those words that end in the letters us ut dominus domine so except for words in the second type of word second category of word that end in us all other words in latin have their nominative and their vocative um the same 
and there are a few Greek words here and there as well. We won't get to the exceptions just yet. This is the rudimenta grammaticae, the rudiments of grammar. Nomina generis neutri. Words of the neuter gender, that's they're not masculine and they're not feminine. Semper habent accusativum similem rectis. That the accusative is similar to the straight cases of the word. So, desinuntque ili tres pluraliter in a, and in the plural they all end in the letter a. Ut, eke verbum, behold a word. Now that is in the nominative. O verbum, we're talking to it. Don't know why, but we are. So it still ends in um, o verbum. And dic verbum, say a word. Then we have a verb acting on the actual thing, but it's still the same, it doesn't change. Um, um, dic verbum. And in the plural, eke verba, behold, words. O verba, speaking to the words, o words. And dic tria verba, say three words. Dic tria verba, say three words. And here they all end in a. Quando nomen, when a word, per suas casus deducitur, when it is drawn or led through its cases, Dicitur declinari. This is called declining, to decline, declinari. Quod apud latinos fit quinque modis, which among the Latins was done in five different ways. So there are five different main categories of doing this. There are many subcategories, unfortunately for you, but there are five main categories, and we call them the five declensions. Agnoscitur autem id ex genitivo, and this is known from the genitive, qui declinationes discriminat, which tells the declensions apart. In other words, the endings of the genitive, of the possessive, for each of these five categories is different. And so you can slot them into their correct place once you know the genitive. You know if it's going to be a first category, second, third, fourth, fifth category. Once you know the genitive of a word, you know where it fits. So, and these are the rules. Nam quae habent in genitivo ai, that's ae, right? No, for those that have in the genitive ai, ea sunt, they are declinationis prima, primae. They are of the first declension. Ea sunt declinationis primae. Nam quae habent in genitivo E, that's the letter I. Er sunt declinationis secundae. They are of the second declension. And nam quae habent in genitivo is. Er sunt declinationis tertiae. They are of the third declension. Nam quae habent in genitivo us. Er sunt declinationis quartae. They are of the fourth declension. And nam quae habent in genitivo ei. Er sunt declinationis quintae. They are of the fifth declension. Now, it takes some time to get all of this into your head. Most of it will come about through use, um, not by just learning charts. Although it does help, of course, to write out the declensions of words. And uh, Comenius certainly encourages this and encourages the teacher to constantly ask for declensions of words in class as well. Um, and, of course, the genitive always appears in a dictionary because that helps us know what declension, in other words, which type, whether it's a first type, second type, third type, fourth type, or fifth type of word, it is. Um, and we'll stop there, and the second part of this chapter will go through the five types of noun.